Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I am shooting in a new studio, um, which you are not going to see again, except for the next interview, because we hate it here. Except but it's fine. <laughs> well, my next interview is right after you, so okay. I'm not moving places for the next one. But <laughs> if you haven't already been able to tell by the glorious laugh um, in this room, I have the amazing <laughs> Ivy Wolf here who will make any shitty studio experience amazing. So <laughs> thank you, Ivy, for being here. Thank you for having me. You look marvelous, by the way. I was just remarking on your, I, I've always loved your sense of style. Like, how do you kind of put, like, where are all these pieces from? Like, how do you put all this together? Do you just have like a ton of jewelry and you mix and match and... Um, honestly, it's been the journey of a lifetime into style. Mm. <laughs> Didn't start here. Didn't no. start here. No. <laughs> what was your style like, gro like growing up or like maybe in your, the early part of your twenties, like before you kind of arrived to where you are now? I think for a long time, I just like followed the crowd and mm -hmm. I was just like, like in high school, I was preppy, mm -hmm. like dressed like popular kids and mm -hmm. all that stuff and just like did what I did to fit in and then as I got older I was just like this really doesn't fit right with me and then mm -hmm. I started exploring got into a lot of black I was wearing like all black all the time because black matches with everything this is true <laughs> and then I was just like okay I'm just gonna play and um just kind of started experimenting with what I like and I just started throwing things together and then I found out like you can make things clash that actually look really good. Like yeah. if it clashes right. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. It's all about, <laughs> it's all about knowing like what things that don't go together, go together. Yeah. And, and just experimenting. Yeah. Just like throwing fucking something together and being like, Oh yeah. I like that. Yeah. I struggle with that actually. And I actually struggle with like what I want my style to be. Cause sometimes I feel like like a hippie kind of vibe works for me. And then I, sometimes I feel like a, like today, like a fashion Nova vibe works for me. Yeah. And then there are days I feel like I should dress my age and dress more, um, I don't know, like a pinup or something. And then other oh. days I think I should just wear like a white button down t-shirt and jeans. Yeah. I but that's the fun of decide. it. That's the fun of it. You can do it all. Yeah. This is different true. days, this different strokes. True. This is true. <laughs> So I haven't seen you in a while. Yes. Because you <laughs> took a hiatus from the adult industry. I did. And for a couple of years. Yeah, you did. And I've been yeah. watching your journey on the oh. whole thing. And it's been uh, it's been really cool to watch. I love to watch people like grow and just, you know, discover like who they are. I think the journey is, you know, such an interesting part of the human condition. And you really like you like your scenes, you really like throw yourself into it. I, I feel like you're somebody who's like an all or nothing kind of person. Mm -hmm. You just like, whatever it is, like you throw yourself into it, like wholeheartedly everything. Um, have you found that as you're going through all of this, like, are you ever afraid of like throwing your whole being into something? Um, or have you found that you, you embrace, you embrace that just like letting it all. I'm always afraid. Mm hmm uh, but I've found that there's no bravery without fear. Um, so I'm always scared. But what's more painful to me is to not give my all to something and to live with regrets and to live in inauthenticity to who I actually am. Um, and I feel like that would be way more painful burden to bear than to just throw myself in. And everybody, everybody's different. And I don't feel like everybody's that way. And everybody needs to be that way. But for me personally, um, it would hurt to hold myself back. Mm -hmm. It would hurt to like not follow my heart and do what I feel called to do and throw myself into the journeys that I've thrown myself into. I've gotten so much out of it, out of it every single time, like throwing myself into the adult industry. I blossomed. I grew like I shed shame shackles. Like I was just like, oh my God, like deeply evolving as a human being and then leaving for a while and going on a really spiritual journey and a, a healing journey and caring about my mental health and processing a lot of childhood stuff was so beautiful as well. And like developing myself as a human being too. Like, who do I want to be? How do I want to look? 
what do, what's going on inside of me? You know, mm-hmm. like really introspective time. That was really necessary as well. So I think I wouldn't be who I am if I wasn't able to throw myself in. I wouldn't be continually evolving yeah. if I wasn't able to. Um, Because that's my method of evolution, if you will. Yeah. Throw myself in. (laughs) We'll see what happens. (laughs) And, you know, that's something that so many people don't do. You know, so many people (laughs) remain stuck in the same rut and they do the same job their entire life and, you know, do the same things over and over again and date the same kind of people and have the same kind of friends. And then I think find themselves, you know, at the end of their life wishing that they had done so much more with their life, which is why I think like people like you and you see it too, like movies, books, TV shows, it's all about like the journey and trying to figure out who you are and and not following the crowd. And I think that appeals to so many people because some people don't do that. Yeah. So it's scared. Yeah. Just really scared. It's scary. And I have to tell you, there were times that like I read some of your posts where, you know, you kind of talked about like being free and, you know, jumping into the unknown and like, what if you just, you know, did what you wanted to do and like dropped all like the day-to-day shackles that we have, you know, that like our jobs and our commitments and our responsibilities. And there were definitely times that I fantasized about that. Like, what if I just quit my job and like (laughs) went to Italy, you know, and just like lived in Italy. I used to have this fantasy when I was feeling really run down in the industry that I would just quit my job and I'd move to Italy and I'd sell flowers on the street corner. Aww. Like that was going to be some <laughs> idyllic life, which pro- probably would not be at all. But I always <laughs> had this like dream of, of doing that. But I feel very bound by my responsibilities to my parents, to my job. I mean, now that I have a kid, like there's no way that's happening. Yeah. And, I, and I'm fine with that. But there are definitely times that I Kids wish. change things. Yes. <laughs> But I think like I was so attracted to your journey and your story because I'm so unlike that. Yeah. You know, I'm so unable to like just drop everything and go and like do and what I want and seek out my dreams. And that's okay. Like I don't regret the decisions that I've made. I think there's like different types of people. Yeah. And we all have different mission in this world and shining a light on something different in this world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so you, so you decided to take a hiatus from the industry because why you were just feeling kind of like you needed a break. There's a lot of reasons, honestly. Um, I feel like, I feel like what I'll mention today is just like, I, I had a, a hard childhood, which I think a lot of people in the adult industry have had. And I think that it makes people when you've gone through some things it really opens you up and it really like separates you from normal typical society which is what brings people I think a lot of times into the adult industry where we're kind of like separated from the crowd a bit and we're more shameless in how we do things and less scared because we've already seen some shit Mm. and um I think I really needed to process that stuff because it was weighing heavily on me. Um, And a lot of people were like, you just won Best New Starlet. You were rising rapidly. Like, why did you leave? Why did you change your appearance so much? Like, all these different things. And for me, I feel like when I left, I just knew that something wasn't right. And I was having physical body issues a lot where I had to cancel shoots a lot and rearrange things a lot. I was having mental health problems, like pretty bad where I was in some deep depressions at different times. And, um, and I, I really like to make people smile. I like to come to set with my best face, my best face forward. I like to give my everything. I I will really give everything I have. The second I step onto set, I will give every last breath. And at a certain point, it was just like, I can't, I can't do this right now. And I didn't want to half ass anything. That's just not my nature. Like we were talking about. And I could feel that that was going to start happening if I didn't address what was going on inside of me. Yeah. And I think a lot of people don't realize 
how much like emotional energy it takes to be in front of the camera, yeah. especially performing in a sexual way. And I have to say that I never understood that really until um, I hosted a show for Playboy TV where I was like in front of the camera. And after like a few weeks of that, I was like, this is way harder than I thought because I was yeah. used to being behind the camera. So I could come into work with like any, I mean, not any attitude, but I could have had a really shitty day and like yeah. I could still trudge through the day because I didn't have to smile and like put yeah. up, you know, an act and put up this whole facade. Um, but when you're in front of the camera, you do. Yeah. And it is so hard to shed those feelings and like pull yourself together for it. I had no idea like what a struggle it is to be in front of the camera until I yeah. had that experience. And it made me really understand like, you know, what you guys go through. That's really beautiful though, that like you were able to have an experience where you could really understand kind of like the other side of the camera yeah. and like what, because that thing that makes you better behind the camera now, now you're like, oh, I like, now I can work around and understand the dynamic that they're going through a little right. better. And that makes, that makes you better. Um, I definitely felt like, I felt like, you know, there's some things that I could handle, like I could handle like a bad day or a bad week, but it was at the point where like I had a deeply abusive, um, childhood that a lot of it really needed to be processed. And I think a lot of people are even scared to admit that they've had a deeply abusive childhood and they're in the adult industry as if it discredits them. Because it fits into that stereotype that everybody assumes every porn star yeah. is. And then, you know, the idea that being in porn feeds into that yeah. trauma and continues to perpetuate it and yeah. drives you down this hole to Which is suicide, not what happened abuse. to me right, at right. all. It was like painful leaving the industry. And since making the decision to come back, it's literally relit up this just light and fire and passion in me. This, I, I realized like, wow, like coming back into the industry, I was like, wow, it really changed me for the better. Mm. Like it really opened me up as a human being and it humanized me because the level of humanness that we get to be together in on set is like, we're all human here. We all have sex. We all have bodies. We all have things we don't like about our bodies sometimes. Our bodies do weird things sometimes. And it just brings this level of humanness that affects every area of your life. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people are scared to be transparent about what they've been through and who they are and their real journey because there's so many stigmas and shames and Di different things around the adult industry. And I just don't believe in that. I believe that everybody's actually human. And that if you show that you're a human being too, and you're on your human journey, they're going to relate to that. And they're going to be like, you know what? Yeah. The, l the more you close people off from you, the more they're going to close off from you and put you in boxes. Mm -hmm. But the more you open yourself in your heart, yeah, so what? Some people are going to judge you. Those people don't matter. Yeah. The more people are going to open up to you and be like, oh, wow. Like, I okay. And yeah. other people that are having the same experiences are going to feel more comfortable with you. And so that's kind of what my mission has been, I feel like, in this industry the whole time is just, like, be vulnerable. Yeah. Just, like, be vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. when we were talking about this a little bit before we started – um, about how, you know, you, you are very vulnerable in your social media posts. And, you know, since with the evolution of adult and the internet, which I've kind of watched since I've been working in the industry, um, from the very beginning of the internet era is that, you know, places like social media, personal platforms where you're able to post what you want about what's going on in your life has really allowed people um, a window into who you are as a person. So yeah. I think before when the only way that you were able to access your favorite porn star was like through a DVD that you bought and, you know, you just saw them as this glossy like box cover yeah. and maybe you got to like meet them, you know, at AVN and get an autograph, but like you didn't really know who they were, yeah. you know, and they were like just this, this, this person who had sex and that was it. But now I think especially because of the way the internet has connected us all um, and also disconnected us all, yeah. that people really do strive 
to for connection. And so people like you who are authentic, who are open about the journey that they're going through, who are open about their struggles, their flaws, their, you know, the things that they learn. Um, I think that really resonates with so many people because we're all on that journey, right? Yeah. We're all trying to figure out who we are. And so to see somebody that you admire, you know, be so open about that, I think is a really healing thing for so many people. So I can imagine that like your fans have really connected with you in a way that, you know, wouldn't necessarily be so if you were. Yeah. Like I don't really get dick pics. Fuck. How crazy is that? Okay. Well, clearly I'm doing something wrong because I never I s- really have. You've never really gotten dick pics. Like, People just respect you too in much the beginning, to I give did. you dick pics. Is that like the measure by which we like know how much I we connect know, with our fans is how many Do dick pics we get? <laughs> Dude, if you're getting dick pics, your marketing strategy is all wrong. We got to. Oh, my God. I can't breathe. Oh God. I like that. That's a that's a barometer that I think uh, we can, the we dick can pic measure. Barometer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I honestly, on the topic of marketing, um, I, I feel like we have such an ability to market ourselves how we want to now as opposed to before. And we have such an opportunity. We have all these people that are gathering towards us and are like so interested and intrigued. Like this person incites these feelings in me and I connect with them on the screen in this way. Mm -hmm. And then when they come to your platform, they get to find out who you are if you let them. Yeah. And I feel like we have the ability to market ourselves as more than sex objects. And I think that a lot of us are scared. I know that I was. I was really scared when I first started, like, deciding to share. I remember. I still remember the day when I was like, I was like, I'm not being authentic to myself. And I'm terrified to do that because what if I lose fans? What if people don't like me as much? What if I'm not taken seriously? What if people think I'm ridiculous? And, oh, my God, spiritual porn star? Does that even go together? Like, what? Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And I remember and I was just like, you know what? It's too painful to hold it in and to pretend. And I was like, maybe I should have a a separate private account where I'm myself and then the account where I'm just Ivy Wolf, the sex object. And I was like, no, fuck that. Fuck that. Let's just make them one. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that's given me a lot of opportunities to really develop an intimate relationship with my fans because as performers, we do have this ability to market ourselves however we want. We don't have to be just a sex object. We don't have to pigeonhole ourselves into the box that other people and society is putting us into. We don't have to do that. We don't have to listen to society. Like, seriously, fuck society. We could just be like, oh, okay, I'm glad you think that way of me. This is who I actually am. Right. This is what I actually am. This is how I'm representing myself. Right. And then other people will see that and be like, yeah, that's who you actually are. Yeah. Like, okay, there's more to you. Yeah. I'm listening, you know? And some, I mean, every once in a while, I still get a message like, shut up and go back to porn. And it's just like, delete, block. Like, yeah, okay. and, you know, <laughs> feedback, <Ignore. laughs> feedback from trolls like that says so much more about them than it does about you. I mean, yeah, I think it just we all really doesn't that. matter. <laughs> yeah. So what do you feel that you learned about yourself during your hiatus? And like, what made you decide to come back to the industry? I feel like... I want to lean back, but I'm scared. (laughs) I don't. Uh Aha, this feels (laughs) good. (laughs) Okay. Um, During my hiatus, I I really learned a lot about, like, self-care. I can't stop staring at your boobs. (laughs) Oh, that's fine. (laughs) Like I said earlier, how much (laughs) cleavage I have is directly correlated to my audience retention. (laughs) Do you hear that, guys? <laughs> do, you want, do you want to continue? Am I distracting you? I'm getting all emotional and vulnerable, and I'm like. <laughs> I mean, you did just move yourself down into I know, like the then I was line. like, oh, the mic is no longer blocking <laughs> it. Um, during my hiatus, I really learned a lot about self care. 
I really learned a lot about how much we repress things we've been through. Even people that haven't had that difficult of a childhood who really haven't even been through that much. I still think everybody is valid in the struggles that they've had in their childhood. Yeah. Regardless of if they measure up to other people who've had it worse. I don't like that. I don't like invalidating other people's struggles based on who has greater struggle. I think that everybody's struggles matter. I think that everybody's struggles should be dealt with differently, for sure. Like, somebody who's been, like, brutally beaten and raped definitely needs a different level of care than somebody whose mom preferred their other sibling, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, but both matter. Right. Um, and I really realized that I had a lot of repressed stuff and that we all do. And the more... I started looking at that the more I started really addressing that um, saying goodbye to the parts of me that weren't really me mm -hmm. that were birthed from an abusive childhood. Ironically, none of it had to do with porn, <laughs> um, but just letting go of those, those parts of myself, the self-sacrificing, because I thought that's what I had to do to be liked and to be loved. Like the people pleasing. Yeah. That's people like, pleasing. That's something I struggle with. And I find like a lot of people struggle with because, yeah. you know, we're social creatures and we want people to like us. We want to fit in. Yeah. But yeah, we, we often, like you said, self-sacrifice in order to make other people happy. And it doesn't generally make people actually like us more. Yeah. I find in the end. I realized I wanted to redefine what love was to me. Mm -hmm. And to me, I don't think love is self-sacrifice anymore. Like a lot of times we measure if someone loves us by what they're willing to sacrifice for us. But what I realized was when I sacrifice for somebody, I go, now you sacrifice for me. Okay. I did that for you. Now you sacrifice for me. Okay. <laughs> And it didn't work that way. I and assume. it doesn't work that way yeah. because like, I just, I don't believe that if we love somebody, we want them to let go of anything that makes them happy. Yeah. God, that's such a great point. And I think that that's a lesson that is so hard for so many of us to learn because we always, I mean, I know that before I met my husband, I was so attracted to like people who I had to fix you know, like they'll be once I come in and I fix their problems, like then they'll be OK and they'll stop doing this thing or that thing. And it's like people are going to be who they're going to be. Yeah. And either you have to come in being able to accept whatever those things are or you have to move on. Yeah. Because we spend our lives trying to like change other people to like fit in with what we think works. And it just doesn't pan yeah. out. Yeah, and I just, I realized, like, I was never going to actually be able to love people like I believe love is. Mm -hmm. Where I believe love is like, hey, this may scare me and this may not serve me, but it, it makes you happy. And I want you to do that. Mm -hmm. Love is not like, hey, can you comfort all my fears and make me feel safe? Love is like, I'm brave enough to love you through my fears. Yeah. I'm brave enough to confront my fears and to be able to love you better and love myself better. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean don't have boundaries, don't have like discerning, discernment. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to like what's right for you or what you want to really invest your time into. But at the end of the day, like I, I just, I realized a lot about love and I think that was really good for me to redefine because of my abusive childhood mm -hmm. is to just really redefine what love is, especially after being taught like I'm selfish and like I'm, you know, in childhood, all these like learned things like you're selfish um, because you, you need to like self-sacrifice more. And I always, that's always, 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 always felt wrong. I felt like you know, it's good to co-create and meet people. It's good to like meet in the middle and like create something that's happy for everybody. But I'm not going to kill myself for anyone or anything. And I realized like I had been doing that, killing myself for things and people out of a misbelief that I had about what love was. Right. Being told I was selfish because I wasn't doing that my whole childhood. So then I eventually, you know, decided I was just going to 
give everything I had and leave nothing for myself and sacrifice everything in the name of like, I love this job or I love this person. And, and I was like, that's not love. I don't think, I don't believe that's love. Yeah. So how, are you dating now? And, and if not, do you feel like you're in a place where you're ready for that? I left the relationship I was in for clarification for everyone. He did not ask nor want me to leave the adult industry. Okay. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, I did. I wanted to. And he and I dated for almost two years. And then it just wasn't, wasn't working anymore. We're still cool. Mm -hmm. The breakup was fine. It was smooth. We were friends for a while. We've decided to like take some space from being friends even because it was such a deep relationship. And yeah. out of like honor and respect of like starting new beginnings with other people or allowing our heart to open to other people, I think space is really good. Yeah. Um, even if you're still good friends with somebody, you know, and honoring anybody new that's coming in. And so... Yeah, we were definitely very, 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 very in love. And he, he taught me a lot and I taught him a lot and did a lot of healing together and just wasn't wasn't right anymore. Yeah. I do believe, though, that, you know, every relationship that we have is a, such a learning experience and sets us up and help, helps us realize, like, what we are looking for and what we're not looking for in another partner, you know? Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I was married before my current husband and I've had other, you know real heartbreaks before like everybody has but yeah. you know looking back now I don't regret any of them because I learned so much from all of those things and it really made me it put me in a place where like I understood what I wanted and yeah. what I needed and I think it's made my relationship with my husband like all the much better and he said the same thing because he was also married before me and it's mm. like like those it was like training ground you know for yeah. us and all of that heartbreak and all that pain was necessary yeah exactly Exactly. And like one thing I've really been working on is like discernment instead of judgment. I believe like when we step into judgment, we step out of our evolution. When we step into discernment, we step into our evolution. Like judgment is literally saying to me personally, it's saying, I think I'm going to take a break from my evolution for a while because we get it in our heads that there's this right way to be and this wrong way to be. And then there's this huge gap where our compassion could be. Mm hmm. If we allowed ourselves to say, this is right for me. Mm -hmm. This is right for me. That's right for them. That's not right for me. Right. But that's not wrong. Who they are or what they're doing. Right. And that can be really hard sometimes for a lot of people. Yeah. I think one of the greatest lessons that I've learned um, in my lifetime is recognizing exactly what you just said is that like, we're all different. We're built differently. We see things differently. We were raised differently. And so one person's reaction to one thing may be completely different than mine. And it doesn't mean that it's wrong just because like yeah. we react differently. It doesn't, cause it's like, we all, we always like I, I say this a lot, but we view everything through like the lens of our own experience, right? You're like, I, and this goes, you know, back to the whole idea of like, how could you do porn? Like I could never do porn. Like I could never have sex with other people. Yeah. I could never like be in a relationship and then have sex with other people for work. It's like, yeah, you can't, yeah. that's fine. Like you, you know, have, you were raised a certain way. You have, you think a certain way, like these are your beliefs, fine. which is fine, yeah. but that doesn't mean that other people feel the same way that you do. So just yeah. because like you couldn't imagine, like doing porn would make you feel bad about yourself. Doesn't mean that it makes other people feel bad about Preach. themselves. It's just like, <laughs> and, and that's something that I think is so hard for people to comprehend that like other people would feel differently about situations than they would. Yeah. And I think that's one of like the keys to, like you said, having compassion for other people and understanding for other people and ultimately like being happy. Like I'm in a 12 step program and, and one of like the mantras that I love is acceptance is the answer. And it's just like all about like acceptance is the answer. Like there's so many things in life that you can't change. The only thing that you're in I control of is your reaction to things. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. Yeah. You can't control other people. You can't control life circumstances. You can't control like the fucking weather. You know, the only thing that you, it's going to rain, you can't control it's going to rain. You know yeah. what you can't control? You can bring an umbrella. Yeah. That's all you can do. I love that. Acceptance so, is the answer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
people I love what you said and like bringing bringing porn into it like just because they can't see and they believe they have this like strict rigorous belief of what's right and what's wrong and like this is not right like it's not right to be in the adult industry it's not right to have sex with other people and be in a relationship or have kids and be in the adult industry and it's like that's right for you it's like the less we focus on what's right for other people, the more we can focus on what's right for us and live the yeah. life of our dreams. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, get your face out of my business, Cheryl. Sorry to Cheryl's out there. <laughs> At least it's not Karen. Poor yeah. All the Karens are like, I'm so sick of my name. I know. Karen's being... too basic now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's moved on to Cheryl's. <laughs> Run the gamut. As long as I get to Holly's. Oh, God. That name I feel it. like Holly's classic. Yeah. Holly's good. Holly's not like a common enough name, I think, that like one would use that to describe like the average disgruntled (laughs) woman. So. Yeah. (laughs) And I am, I am currently um, in a relationship. I don't like titles I've found Mm. because I feel like a lot of times these like programs come up out of us. I Mm -hmm. mean, I think they're good to like interact with society because like how the hell are you going to talk about like, you know, like, hey mom, this is my, uh. You know? Yeah. (laughs) Friend. Yeah. It's like obviously so much more and so much deeper than that. So it's like I I use them in that way. But um, for me, I notice a lot of programs of like expectational based love and victimhood consciousness come up a lot in relationship and have definitely come up for me a lot in relationship Um, and control like in extreme measures of control, especially around women and especially around their sexuality. <laughs> and as we know, you cannot tame the wolf. So <laughs> that's not happening. But um, but I have somebody that I love very much. Um, and we've been flowing together for about almost a year, 10 months. And I also just met somebody else that I love very much. Um, and it's interesting. You were asking about soulmates earlier. Um, I, I felt like a couple times in my life, something like that, but I recently had a really interesting experience when I met this second person where the first day we met, we were like looking into each other's eyes and then all of a sudden we're both blasted into this. And this experience was like, for both of us, Mm -hmm. we're like blasted into these like visions of other lives and we're like watching this movie in our head and then I like I I like start telling him about it and he starts finishing my sentences wow so we're like having the same experience we're seeing the same thing and we're both just like (laughs) that's crazy like holy fuck um and it's just intense and I've never felt anything like that in my whole life where I just like know that every single life I've ever had, this person has found me and we've loved each other, whether they've been my brother or my friend or whatever way it's been. Like we've always loved each other and we've always had each other. Yeah. And it was this like wave of calm that washed over me. Of just like being re- being reunited with like family. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely an experience I had recently. And then the visions just kept continuing. Like every time we would hang out, we would have a new one and remember a new life. And like it, it it's just like to the point where like we're like finishing each other's sentences. We're like both seeing the same thing. He's like saying something and I'm like finishing it. And I'm like, I know. Wow. <laughs> I'm seeing that too. Like, wow. it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's riveting. It makes you believe. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I feel like I've had many experiences like that where like, they're the reason why I believe in the things I do. Mm-hmm. Like I've had real life experiences where mm-hmm. it's undeniable that what I'm experiencing is real. Mm-hmm. And that gives a person unwavering faith in things that many people waver on. Yeah. So are you guys kind of like, are you simultaneously like, I know you don't like to use labels, but like, uh, how are we going to talk about it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, are you simultaneously dating both these people? Or? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing that for a while since I, I was monogamous with Chaguar was my choice. I feel like monogamy can be this beautiful container mm-hmm. and like it can be a great way to like focus your energy. Mm-hmm. And honestly, a lot of your wounds come out in monogamy even more, I believe. Mm-hmm. Like you got to look at your shit. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're putting a lot of pressure on one person. Yeah. You know, because if, if no distractions, yeah, if that's, that's <laughs> your, then they've got to take on the burden of, of, of everything that you're lugging along with you. Yeah. It's just like, so. wow, that was a walk through shadow land for sure. Yeah. It was good though. Yeah. It's like, okay, Ivy, look at your shit. <laughs> All right. We got to take a commercial. I knew this was going to happen. We were going to go off and have this amazing conversation and I was going to completely lose fucking track of time. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. No I was not going to get to any of my questions. <laughs> Which is fine. I mean, this is why you're so fun to talk to. But we need to take a commercial break to hear from my sponsors who pay for studios like this. Um, So uh, hang around, guys. We'll be right back. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is like the biggest online sex toy retail store. And in fact, they don't just offer sex toys. They also have movies, they have lingerie. They basically have anything sexy that you could be looking for. Now they have an incredible offer. Get 50% off of any one item when you go to adamandeve.com. But that's not where it ends. So not only will you get 50% off any one item, They will also load up 10 free gifts for you on top of that. You will get six free movies, a free mystery pack that includes an item for him and a special toy for her and something we know you'll both enjoy, plus free shipping. Now that's a lot of free stuff, but you can only get this offer if you go to adamandeve.com and use my code HOLLY. That's adameve.com, use code HOLLY, for 50% off of any one item plus 10 free gifts. Hello, everybody. We are back. So, Ivy, um, I want to talk to you about your Vixen contract. So you've come back and you're exclusive with Vixen, who just released a new all-girl website called Slade. Looks incredible. Like, everything that they do it looks incredible. So tell me a little bit about what it's been like to come back in the industry just under that umbrella and um, the kind of projects that you're working on, the new site, yes. that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, also, subtext. I am very weird. I do accents. This is part of who I am. I didn't notice. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been really, really beautiful to gradually come back into the industry through Vixen. Um, I feel like they they definitely not to discredit any other companies. I feel like I feel like we all do our best to make money and stick to a vision that we enjoy. Um, I personally really resonate with their vision a lot of the times, and it's been really beautiful to come back. Um, and have some artistic say, be able to like, like choose talent if that's what I want to do, like have the freedoms to do that kind of stuff as I'm easing my way back in. Mm-hmm. So decided it was a good idea to sign a contract with them um, while I kind of slowly ease my way back into the industry. And I'm not like constantly shooting. I'm shooting really high production like number of scenes spread out throughout time yeah that we put a lot of effort into yeah and then um eventually i will release myself to the world of porn again (laughs) it's nice though to come back into like a controlled environment where you don't really have to yeah because for me i'm shooting i'm shooting the least amount i've ever shot in my life i only shoot like four times a month i used to shoot like four times a week Yeah. Which is crazy. And, you know, after I had my daughter, I was like, I just don't want to shoot that much anymore. And I've also been doing it for a really long time. Yeah. Um, And I'm only shooting for, and this is out of choice. I'm not under a contract. Um, I'm only shooting for my website and then I'm only shooting for twisties and browsers. And that's all I'm doing. And it is just nice to just like, 
you know, all the other clients that I was working for, they, they were great, but just slow down, you know? Yeah. And it's it makes me feel so much, I feel like I do a better job because I'm less burned out. Quality over quantity. Yeah, because before when I was shooting like constantly, um, you know, like I just, it, it, it was hard to show up to work every day, like excited about it because you're so tired. Like, I don't know how Quasar does it. Actually, I do know how he does it. He drinks a lot and he hates his job. Yeah, I was literally <laughs> like, his soul dies. Yeah. <laughs> and we both love Quasar very much. Uh, um, so much. I miss so him much. dearly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I just <laughs> was like, you know, I just look at like, and we talk a lot because we're good friends. And I'm just like, man, I'm so glad I'm not shooting that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> glad I'm not you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything I think like after a while done that much becomes monotonous. Absolutely. And it's hard to create spice. Yeah. And I just feel like the quality of your work suffers and just like, you know, I noticed that my attitude was getting kind of shitty and that's not good for my crew and it's yeah. not good for the model. Like nobody wants to work with somebody yeah. who like doesn't want to be there. Yeah. You know, like and it's just, it just gets nice. to the point where they're just like, all right, you know, like you're supposed to be like leader of inspiration and they're yeah. just like, okay. <laughs> but there's also like, there's also a problem with so many studios just fucking churning out too much content. Yeah. You know, like brands like Vixen, you guys, you know, every one of their sites, um, deeper blocked, um, slide now. They only do one release a week, I believe, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm so I don't want to say anything. I'm not sure. I'm going to say yes, because I am a member of Vixen.com and I pay for it. So Oh, fuck yeah. Yay for me. Do you hear that, guys? Yeah. She pays for her I porn. I pay for my porn. It's the only <laughs> website that I pay for, actually. Um, and I never watch any of it, but... Uh, <laughs> I pay for it. I actually gave it to a girlfriend of mine who like wanted some high quality porn to watch with her husband. And I was like, you should watch Vixen. It's so funny when people ask me, they're like, you know, what like beautiful, like couples friendly, like, you know, we want to watch porn. We want something that's really pretty. Never do I recommend my own work. I'm always like, go watch Vixen. <laughs> my going to kill me for saying that. Like, I feel like that would, you would enjoy that. And uh, I just do. feel like you would enjoy that. Yeah, let me let me just not promote my own stuff. Um, <laughs> true. I mean, you know, that's very kind of you. The quality. I mean, come on. Let's the quality is like fucking outstanding. Let's okay. let's just be real here. Yeah. So um, I'm not blind. Uh, I love them. Very but much. and the yeah. thing is, everybody in the crew, like it's not just about like, like it's like and I love I've, there's so many crews where I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm home. Mm -hmm. But there is something about, like, every single person on that crew is just like, all right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they all are just, like, breaking. And everybody does this. Everybody does this. But they all are centered on the same artistic vision together. Like, yeah. really, 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 really honed in together on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's definitely pre present with everyone. But... There's just something about the way that the crews work where you're just like, like, you just feel like, oh, yeah, like, we're making art. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think to, like, be able to shoot stuff that you feel personally inspired by makes such a huge difference. I mean, that's what I've noticed, you know. Like, I'm so much more excited to shoot the stuff that I'm shooting for Twisties and Brazzers now because I only shoot the Twisties Treat of the Month stuff, which, by the way – my Twisty Tree of the Month shoot with Ivy was so cool. Still one that of my was favorite so sets. so fun. It was so fun. Um, and then I only shoot the showcases for browsers. Oh, so cool. like I only shoot like their more high production stuff. So it's a lot more exciting to shoot because it is like a more artistic vision and they give me a bigger budget to like make right. things happen. Um, and I think also too, probably what I, I mean, I have friends that work at Vixen. I've obviously never worked there. But what it seems to me is that like, everybody has like their own very particular job that they get to focus on. Um, whereas in a lot of other cases, and this was really more so when I was shooting for other brands, um, like I said, Mind Geek's giving me like good budgets now and, and you know, I, I'm allowed to have more crew members. Like we had to wear a lot of hats. Like I exactly. used to shoot where there was literally like me and like two other people. And so like my lighting guy was also the second cameraman. He was also like the PA. He was yeah. also, 
Um, you know, like did the stills lighting, did the video lighting, did the sound, like it was just so many. And when you have to do so much stuff in a day and you're running ragged, trying to do all of these things, you don't get the time to like focus on getting like those beautiful cinematic shots and you just get burnt out. You're just and fucking tired. And you can't tired. even focus on the artistic vision no. because you're doing so you're doing much. way too much shit. Like I don't even, like I remember, I remember being on a set like that and I'm like massaging the cameraman's back because he's just like like he, yeah he, he's just he's in so much pain yeah and he's working every day like yeah. crazy hours we're yeah. wearing all these fucking hats doing all yeah. these things and you're just it's just like it's profoundly amazing how so many of the other crews and other companies do what they do um i think that Vixen, you're right, has done something magical where they've expanded the crew and that's given everybody like a very specific job, you know, yeah. like, like um, director's assistant. I can't remember what the title is. Where assistant director? Yeah. Where they're, it's, it's like, like, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, like that, per, that, that's that person's job, you yeah. know? <laughs> <laughs> like the director is all, and I actually didn't understand this until I started working on some other like bigger sets, but the director is really there to like help move the vision along and, you know, um, get the, the actors saying the dialogue in the, in the way that they want. And obviously like between them and the DP, depending on the shots, but like the assistant director is there to like make sure the models are ready for like the next scene and make sure that like they're dressed and like all that other behind the scenes shit, because like. I don't have an assistant director. So, so often when I'm like ready, I have to like go find whoever I need for the next scene yeah. and make sure that they're ready and they're dressed and whatever they're supposed to be. And when I should be on set with my DP, like talking about the next scenario, I shouldn't be yeah. like trying to fucking herd cats. Yeah. You know, especially when you've got a big like talent pool and they're just like, God knows where they are. It's like trying yeah. to find people, you know? All right. Let's talk about your singing and songwriting. Um, something that you are really good at. You have a beautiful voice and, mm -hmm. um, I'm always really admirable of people who are musically talented because I'm so far from that. It's not even funny. <laughs> I wanted to be a singer when I was younger and I have the, I mean, I sound like a dying cat. It's truly, I try to sing nursery rhymes to my daughter and I'm like, ah, and she's like, <laughs> She like wake. She's like drifting off to sleep, but then I like lose it, and she's like, ah, <laughs> like fuck. Even my daughter hates my voice. It's so sad. So I just hum them. Um, so I just hum them. I just hum. It's so bad. My it's voice beautiful. is just terrible. Uh, so tell us a little bit about like your musical journey. Like when did you start singing? Like are you currently writing songs? Are you planning on producing anything anytime soon? Um, I definitely have been singing. A lot, most of my life, honestly, it was really what got me through a lot of my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, singing was definitely my lifeline in a lot of ways. I have definitely had periods in my life where it's like, oh, it's been five years and I've written poetry, but I haven't written any songs. Um, but I have been writing a lot more since I took my hiatus, especially in the past year. Um, I was actually just yesterday finishing up a song... Um, about my experience with finding somebody from another life. And like one of the lines is like, fuck everything, fuck the rules, fuck it all, now I know the truth. I just wanna be with you. Um, it's so pretty. <laughs> I was hoping you would sing, but I didn't wanna put you on the spot. Oh. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited to release it and another song called Shapeshifter, and it just kinda goes, I don't want a shapeshifter. I want you. I don't want what you think I do. I want you. And a bunch of other stuff. And it like goes into the high ranges and then it goes into belting. And um, it's something I'm really passionate about and something that's just been an anchor for me in my life is singing and creating and making masterpieces of emotional vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, that's just something clearly I'm very passionate about. <laughs> that's really, it's so great to have some kind of like an artistic outlet like that for your emotions, because, you know, so many times it's like, what do we do? What do we do with all this pain that we're holding on to? Right. Yeah. And, and often the best pieces of art 
are driven by the most amount of pain, right? Yeah. Do you feel that like when you were going through all of that trauma and, and, and just processing everything, do you feel that like your singing and songwriting actually improved? I definitely feel like everything improved, like my singing and songwriting improved, my life improved, like everything. Um, I felt like it was like my own kind of therapy, honestly, mm. like to just just get it out and look at it and realize how beautiful it actually was, you know, like make something beautiful from something so painful. And now that I've like done so much healing and progressing and evolving in my life, I feel like there's so many moments in which um, I I can I can like write about positive stuff now yeah. more. Yeah. Whereas like, and I think that's been my whole thing every every time like I've ever created, whether it's poetry, whether it's a song, it's like ending it in an uplifting, empowering way. And it's a way where I get to change the story. Mm -hmm. I get to decide how I'm going to feel about this and how this is going to end. Mm -hmm. And being able to like write my story and then create my ending has really empowered me to realize like that's what life is. Yeah. You know? And art has really empowered me to realize that's what life is. Like, I get to write my story. I get to write the ending of my story, the ending of my song, the ending of my poem. Um, so, yeah, I'm yeah, really there's, excited. There's so much strength <laughs> to be found in, like, going through those dark times, you know? And yeah. that's what just, I think, makes, makes, like, life worth living. Yeah. In a strange way. Like, Honestly. You know, it. so a lot of people know that, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I had huge... <laughs> Huge drinking problem for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I was sober for a long time and then I relapsed and then I got sober. I've been sober for uh, over three years again now. Wow. But like, honestly, I wouldn't trade any of that for for what I got out of it because it made me grow so much as a person and it made me really look at myself and really taught me coping skills, which are just like enormously helpful today. Yeah. And if I feel if I, if I wasn't forced to, to, to confront all of these, you know, these problems that I was having, and if I didn't go through that, like it wouldn't make me the person I am today. And it wouldn't like have instilled the gratitude that I have yeah. today. Like we were talking about. Yeah. Like when we finally address those repressed things. Yeah. And I really understand. I, by the way, congratulations. Thanks. You're fucking killing it. <laughs> I love when I hear that stuff. I am like five years clean off of uh, a drug we will not talk about um, four or five years now. I've never relapsed um, or anything. I just made the decision one day. I was like, this is, gonna, this is holding me back. So when I left the adult industry, I knew, like, I know when I'm, like, feeling like there's repressed stuff I'm not dealing with. If I don't deal with it, I'm going to cope. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's no way I'm going back to yeah. doing what I was doing. Yeah. There's no fucking way that yeah. will ruin my life. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I feel like. Alcohol, the dangerous thing about alcohol is it's, like, it it can be sometimes, like, l like that you can find an almost balance with it, you mm -hmm. know? Like, maintain it in your life's life a little easier than, like, hard drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, yeah, everyone's different. I mean, everyone's different. <laughs> but I think yeah. that, you know, for most people, you know, they can drink responsibly in a way, you know, and, like, it it is something that can help you like unwind and relax after a long day. And there's totally nothing wrong with that. Man, I wish I could do that. But my problem is, is I can't have two drinks. Like once I get that alcohol in me, it flips a switch in my brain and I become somebody else. And I'm just like, I can't stop. And I obsess constantly over drinking. And then even if I have a lot of alcohol, I obsess over like, when am I, is that going to be gone? When can I get more? Like, I just, I'm not even in the moment enjoying being, like drinking. Yeah. It's just like, it's crazy. It's a horrible experience wow. for me. So 
But, you know, like, I mean, my husband drinks. Like, I have no problem with people drinking. It's just not something that I can do. Well, that's do. beautiful that you're, like, around it and you're, yeah. you're okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we're all built differently. That's why, you know, when people get on this whole thing about, like, porn addiction, that also makes me crazy because they're like, all porn should be outlawed because I have a problem with it and I watch too much of it and it's ruined my life. It's like, oh, really? Well, you don't see me going around saying that, like, all alcohol should be outlawed and nobody should be able to drink alcohol because I can't personally exactly. drink it in a responsible way way that's just like me and who I am and that's my problem so but that doesn't control mean control of your own self yeah but that doesn't mean that other people can't have alcohol so that like, that argument about the porn addiction thing that makes me crazy because I'm just like it's we're yeah. literally talking about the same thing yeah exactly so. exactly I love that point I love that a lot so that's what I felt like I was just like I I cannot there's so many so many so many reasons it's like I cannot go into coping just to be able to continue working. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I have a whole message in this industry and that is so against everything I want to do, my message, who I am, like. Yeah, do you feel like a responsibility now to kind of like be a certain way or, cause you know, you are an inspiration to a lot of people. Do you feel um, like a weight of responsibility with that now? Um. Try not to think about it, <laughs> but yes, like I don't want um, to misguide people. Right. Um, I think that it's just my duty to stay in alignment with myself and my truth. And I'm a human being. I'm going to have a journey. Yeah. But to just try my best to like stay in alignment with who I really am and who I really came here to be. And just don't think about, don't think too much about like, leading other people and just think about leading myself and just like taking the focus off of other people and putting it on myself, I feel like helps me stay in the place where I have things of value to bring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just what I want. Yeah. yeah. Ivy, you're a beautiful person and I'm so happy that we get to connect again. Aww. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I feel me. like I'm going to cry. I don't know where that came from. Sorry. Aww. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I really don't know where that came from. Must <laughs> be this shitty. Is opening. It must be this <laughs> shitty studio that I'm in. It's just like God, it's like in my eye. It's just the dust in the air. I think <sighs> you're a really beautiful person. Thank you. And I think that you've definitely been scared because of how beautiful and vulnerable and soft and actually caring of a person you are and what the world kind of in the past has given those kinds of people. Yeah, that's a good point. When you like rip yourself open and yeah. sur surviving and taking care of others. And I think you've done a really good job. Thank you. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of you. A beautiful baby. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She's awesome. I love her. I already love her. <laughs> I don't even know her. <laughs> Ivy, can you tell everybody where they can find you on that's your camera. Sorry, I keep. I mean, you can look at that one, but they're not really gonna see you. It's just it's not me. gonna be good. Yeah. Uh, tell everyone where they can find you online, um, where they can connect with you. Anything you want to plug? Um, my Instagram is official Ivy Wolf with the E at the end of Wolf. Uh, my Twitter is Ivy Wolf's World E at the end of Wolf again, and then my my YouTube. I'm trying to remember. I have a bunch of YouTube videos coming soon, but I cannot remember what it's called because I haven't posted in a year and a half. Well, if people go to YouTube and they Google your name, it yeah. should come up like right away. It should come or up. Or they search your name in YouTube. Or, I mean, Google owns YouTube, so I guess kind of same thing. Yeah. Search me on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It feels good to like have a platform for my voice yeah. in some way. No, I think this is like a really beautiful and inspiring episode and I expect that you will be getting a lot of feedback from this. Yay. So <laughs> make sure that you guys go and- I have um, touched my water. You haven't touched your water. <laughs> There's no lipstick mark on it that I can sell on eBay later. <laughs> can you do that? No, I don't know, probably. Oh. I've never tried, <laughs> but I guess great. I could. <laughs> And uh, you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Twitter and on Instagram. And if you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And yeah, if you were like moved by 
any of the conversation here. If you want to just tell Ivy how awesome you think she is, um, she previously plugged her socials, go tell her hi, say you listen to this podcast and that you appreciate um, her time because uh, I love my guests to get feedback so that they can feel like they was time well spent. Yay. All right, guys, I will see you next week.